The world's greatest road race, the 1993 Daido Hoksan World Solar Challenge. The race is run over 3,000 kilometers, the equivalent to racing from Norway to Italy, and the cars are only powered by sunshine. It is a race across Australia, from Darwin to Adelaide down the Stewart Highway. This is a first-class strip of bitumen, without a set of traffic lights or a major crossroad. The first World Solar Challenge race was held in 1987. The General Motors Sun Racer left the other competitors behind when it set an average speed of 67 kilometers per hour. The project director behind the Sun Racer was Howard Wilson. Howard, how has the Sun Racer's shape contributed to the shaping of current solar cars today? Well, I think as you can see by most all the cars running in the race that they they draw their heritage from the, uh, the Sun Racer. The uh, breakthrough the Sun Racer made, I think, in 1987 was it was the first car that was built that uh, had the possibility of achieving speeds of over 40 miles an hour. And uh, it's a very strong break uh, around 35 to 40 miles an hour in the importance of the aerodynamics. Before that time, it was more important to know that you could capture the most sun energy. And so we saw cars earlier than that that used tilting panels which do indeed capture more of the sun's energy, but of course are very poor aerodynamically. But as cars get up into the 40 mile an hour range, then the aerodynamics come strongly forward. And uh, I think our contribution was to realize that a car could be built that would go faster than 40 miles an hour, and then to design it aerodynamically with that thought in mind. And it proved that we were correct when we won the race so handily in 1987. And I think uh, since then, all the best cars that can go at those speeds have emphasized aerodynamics. Howard, did the Sun Racer make a useful contribution to General Motors' electric car, the impact? Yes, it did. The uh, thing that many people don't realize is that the original impact vehicle was actually designed and built by the, the Sun Racer solar car team. Uh, when we returned from Australia six years ago, we were thinking of what had we really uh, accomplished besides winning the race and we realized that we had learned a great deal about energy efficiency and we also realized that uh, electric vehicles had suffered in the past by not being efficient enough and therefore not having a long enough range on a battery charge and so we thought that we could apply the lessons we had learned on the Sun Racer to an electric car which would have a considerably longer range and so we made the proposal to General Motors to allow us to make the impact vehicle and they approved that and so the result a year later was the uh, impact. In the weeks before the start of the race, the more competitive teams are trialling their cars under race conditions, heat, and the occasional dust storm. As soon as the storm passed, Pomona returned to their trialling. Other teams had greater problems to contend with. Kevin, the George Washington University team had a major disaster. Tell us about it. In transit, the forklift driver, driver dropped our car, uh, which was in a crate, and punctured the bottom of the car and severely damaged the array. Have you been able to repair the damage? Uh, most of it. The chassis, we feel, is strong enough to, to withstand the race. However, the array has suffered severe damages, and we're not sure we can bring it up to full power. Kevin, you've just finished trialing. How did the repaired car perform? We've lost about 30 to 40 percent of the power our array used to put out. Um, unfortunately, we're not sure if we can gain all this back. We're still working on the array to, to get that power back. Otherwise, the car has been doing excellent. And what do you think you'll be able to cruise at? Uh, that number keeps changing depending on how, how much power our array puts out. Yesterday, we were averaging about 42, 43 miles per hour. Kevin, what are the most unique features of your car? Well, I think the single most important feature of our car is it's low aerodynamic profile. Its thickest point is about 
a foot, and from which tapers out to the edges, which gives us probably the smallest frontal area of any car. Five cars were damaged in transit to Darwin, including the Danish entry, and the Monash Melbourne car solution, which suffered a catastrophic breakdown in its electronics. Ian, the Monash Melbourne car has an electronic problem. It does indeed. Uh, we're fitting a new uh, drive converter uh, for motor speed control and vehicle speed control. The previous converter uh, was seriously damaged by failure of some power electronic MOSFETs, some power electronic switches, uh, which uh, were not up to specification. Others were flat out just getting their cars assembled. For some, it is just too much. The logistics of transporting and preparing a car for the World Solar Challenge is an enormous task, but the crew of Sunjoy have it well in hand. The Canadians talk through their problems. There is one team from Japan who have no particular interest in winning the race. It represents a science fiction comic strip character called Doraemon. It is an earless cat that has come back from the future to help mankind by educating today's children. Its message is, let's be earth friendly and be challenged by the unknown. The World Solar Challenge is the perfect setting to promote these ideas. The Australian children are fascinated by the car. Doremon will average 35 kilometres per hour on its run between Darwin and Adelaide. Freddie, what changes have you made in the design of your car since the last race? Uh, when we decided to develop a new car, we said the car of 1990 was basically a good concept, so we based on this concept again, and we intended to improve each component by 10%. This was the idea, and what we realized is now uh, about 20% higher average speed than the last time. Which means you hope to maintain what speed going down the Stuart Highway? Well, it's a bit difficult to make a forecast, but if we have good weather, this means sunshine, no cloud and no wind. Uh, we hope to uh, achieve a speed, an average speed of 90 kilometers per hour. Freddie, what kind of drive system are you using? This time we are using a, a motor who is in the wheel, so we have no loss of efficiency by the transmission from the motor to the wheel. Uh, the shape is principally the same, it's the, the form, the shape of an air wing, that's the idea of, of the shape of the car. Uh, but we have, we have made it a bit smaller and uh, mainly the, the canopy is um, less high than the last time. And also uh, the wheels are um, encapsulated in a better way than the last time. I understand you no longer have a steering wheel in the cockpit. That's right. We didn't have uh, enough space for the steering wheel, so we have two sticks to steer the car. You have mounted the motor at the rear wheel. What advantage is there in that? It's dramatic and interesting, and it takes a while to, to explain this. Uh, it turns out that in solar cars, there's what we call a weight power trade-off. That is, uh, if you put an extra kilogram in the car, it takes a certain amount more power to push it along. It turns out, by simply, and it's very simple to do these calculations, that the weight power trade-off for solar cars is around about a watt a kilogram. Now, some people have worked that out, but not everybody has. But it means that uh, if you put a, an extra kilogram in the car, it's going to take another watt to drive it. It also means that if you take a kilogram out of the car, it takes a watt less to drive. But then you've got to invert that question. You say, what happens if I put something in there which weighs a kilogram but increases the efficiency? Does it pay off? We've always known that in the wheel motors had to be heavy. General Motors' first motor weighed four and a half kilograms. The best motor in the last race weighed three and a half kilograms. People have converged on this very small, fine motor solution. But then you've got to think about what happens if I make it a bit heavier? Because in the wheel it has to be heavier. So we actually added 
eight kilograms to this motor, it runs at 16 kilograms, and by adding eight kilograms, it turns out that we can get these extraordinary efficiencies of 96% and save the transmission losses, which effectively is about 150 watts. David, what cruising speed do you expect the Honda vehicle to make?